I'm Melinda Elmer, and thank you for watching my video blog. I'm with Keller Williams, and today I have with me Nick Cowan of Wholesale Capital Corporation. And he's going to give you some contact information in case you have questions later on. I'm Nick Cowan at Wholesale Capital Corporation. I'm a direct lender. My phone number is 951-488-3180 or 714-642-3557. So today we're going to answer some questions about purchasing a home and what the loan process is like. So Nick, how does someone know how much house they can afford? Well, when you're buying a home, mortgage lenders, we just don't look at your income or assets or the down payment that we have. Uh, we look at the liabilities, your debt obligations, your, your auto loans, your credit card, your child support, potential property taxes, fire insurance, your overall credit rating. So we go through the, this process to determine what you can qualify up to and basically afford. Um, and if your credit isn't high enough, we can also help with that too. What is the difference, Nick, between a fixed rate loan and an adjustable rate loan? Well, fixed rate mortgage is the interest rate is set when you take on a loan. Um, and it will not change over the life of the loan. With an adjustable rate mortgage, it's also known as an ARM, um, the interest rate may go up or down. And uh, many ARMs will start with a lower interest rate than uh, fixed rate mortgages. So Nick, how is an index and a margin used in an adjustable rate mortgage? Uh, so when, uh, when you get an arm, two main factors determine the rate that you pay, the index and the margin. The index is a rate that's set by the market, which usually follows a LIBOR. The index adjusts with economies ups and downs. The margin is a fixed, is a fixed basically rate, it's agreed upon the bank, um, which is added to the index to determine that your actual rate. Yeah. Nick, how does someone know which type of mortgage is best for them? <laughs> so we're talking about the biggest financial decision of your life. So I usually have uh, clients ask themselves uh, a few questions. Um, how long you plan uh, to live in the house? Uh, where do you see, see yourself in five years or ten years? Uh, which will determine you know, whether we decide or, or fit within a uh, fixed rate loan or an adjustable rate, a rate loan. Um, do you have or want to make any home improvements? Uh, do you want to keep cash on hand for other investments? Uh, what's the really financial risk? Um, and do you want to be debt free? And so these are the common uh, decisions uh, or questions that are asked to, to decide on the type of mortgage loan that we seem that would fit your best need, the needs of, uh, of yourself. So now, what would a mortgage payment include for a buyer? Uh, mortgage employment payment includes, you'll hear this uh, a lot, it's called a PITI, and what that is, is principal, your interest, uh, your taxes, and your insurances. Now the principal is the payment on the, that you're paying on the amount that's borrowed. Uh, the interest is repayment to the lender for the amount that's borrowed. Uh, the taxes are the property taxes on the property, and then the insurance is uh, the payment for the fire insurance. And that's once again, is, is uh, acronym is uh, PITI, which you'll hear a lot uh, in, in uh, financial transactions for uh, a mortgage loan. Now, how much cash does someone need to purchase a home? Well, for this, it all comes down to your uh, home plot, home price, uh, the market area loan limits, uh, the type of loan that's used for financing. For instance, I'll just go over a couple. Um, we have a VA loan, uh, requires no down payment. A conventional loan, you can get away with as minimum as 3% down. Uh, FHA loan, you can get away with 3.5% uh, down as a minimum down payment. There's also a rural loan called the USDA that has no down payment. And then for the payments that require down payments, there's also grant programs that are available that you have to fit within the criteria. What would be the smallest down payment for some of those grant programs? Um, zero, 100%. So there's actually, for the FHA program, um, there's a platinum program uh, that you can use, but there is a... There's income restrictions on it, uh, and there's uh, debt ratio restrictions also, your debt to what your income is. So for the most part, people, generally speaking, should have 3 to 3.5% 3 down minimum, unless they're able to use a VA, and Correct. they have to account for that. Yes, yes. How long does the mortgage process take? Uh, industry standard is usually 30 days. Um, myself, I have an average turn time of 21 days or sooner, but it takes a team of people. It takes everybody involved. Uh, in saying that, uh, during the loan process, your application is going to pass through about uh, 20 hands of professionals, at, at least, at the minimum. And then with so many people handling your transactions, it's easy for processing to get backlogged. So you got to remember, your file must be checked by the processing team, we have an underwriting team, we have a settlement team, 
There's also escrow. There's a there's title. There's the sellers. There's agents. There's transaction coordinators. There's an appraiser, and then any issues that arise uh, arise during that process. So there's, it's a lot to coordinate. Um, so the best advice that I can give is be patient as you can. You got to remember that everything that I'm asking for or requesting is to help speed the process of closing your loan. As of August 1st this year, I know we have some big changes coming up. How long will the mortgage process take after August 1st? Well, now what's going to go in effect is when you, um, we have loan docs, there's going to be a time period that we have to wait till you actually can sign. So that may push out uh, our normal 30-day process to possibly another 10 business days. Um, so once everything finalized and you can sign your loan docs and we're going towards the funding uh, and closing time period, um, there's going to be time requirements now that you're going to have to wait to actually sign your loan docs. You're going to have like a, a breathing room um, of, of three days before you can actually physically sign your loan docs and, be, and those loan docs be accepted. So I would say that it's probably going to jump up uh, a longer time period uh, than the normal industry standard of now of 30 days. It's probably closer to 45 days after August 1st would be the quickest yes. closing. What does the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification? Well, I kind of, um, with this, I think the best way to describe this is uh, before a recession, uh, and I get a lot of this because a lot of people have purchased homes before, um, but before the recession happened, you know, mortgage approvals were like ice cream flavors from Baskin Robbins, and, and there's numerous amounts, and it's easy to get. Um, you know, before you just needed a, a heartbeat Social Security number, and you can get a loan. Um, but in the last seven, eight years, it's been significantly, significantly restricted. Um, in general, uh, somebody that pre-approves you, uh, what's going to happen is um, the, you're going to get your credit run, uh, your actual credit run. I'm going to verify your income and assets. And then when somebody pre-qualifies you, it's just a discussion. We're going to discuss those, the credit. We're going to discuss your income. We're going to discuss your assets. So that's the major difference since, uh, and since the agents and sellers view an actual pre-approval as more of a firm start to the home buying process, it's best to get pre-approved. Absolutely. It's a lot stronger for a buyer when they're purchasing a home as well. Now, what is the difference between an interest rate and an APR? Uh, where interest rate is um, it's a, your fixed rate, your note rate. The APR is something that you can use as a consumer because um, I'm going to send an estimate and when I do qualify you, you can use that to bounce off uh, and see um, the uh, other lenders um, or other estimates. Uh, it's the cost that are associated with it. Uh, the APR you can use, uh, once again, the note rate, you have the note rate, whatever the, the rate is, and then the, uh, the annual percentage rate is with all the fees included. And so it's a shopping tool. What are the closing costs generally? Uh, closing costs are associated with the transaction of all the entities that are involved that I discussed uh, previously. Um, it's uh, the fees are roughly around three percent um, of the transaction or the purchase price, um, and then uh, those are all associated with the transaction of all the all the parties involved. Okay, great. And how much do those generally run? Around three percent. They they generally run around three percent of the purchase price. How much? How do someone figure out how much equity they have in a home, or if they should refinance, or if they have other options available? I mean, there's a lot of tools out there. I know a lot of uh, you know people use Zillow and, and stuff like that online. But the best to get the closest accurate um, uh, information would be to call your realtor or, or you know discuss it with myself uh, as the lender. Uh, we could look up the closest comps that closed uh, around you, the recent uh, comps, comparable sales that closed around you, uh, to assist you with that, to tell you what your what your assets are or how much equity you may have in the property or how much it has increased over the, the time that you purchased uh, your property. Great. And uh, absolutely, we're always happy to provide that information to help them go over their options for sure. Now, what is the best advice that you have for a new home buyer? Um, for a new home buyer, I think it's to to budget, I think is the best thing is to to coordinate and uh, you know sit down and figure out what your what you can truly afford. Uh, myself, I look at black and white. I see what your income is. You know, we use your net income. I don't know your personal spending habits, um, so I would say a budget is the best thing to start with for you to really set yourself up to be successful and uh, and not live for your home or live for your mortgage payment. 
Um, and uh, I would say that that would probably be the best advice is to start with a budget. And then, you know, call us. We're, we're here to help. Um, we're here to um, assist you with that, that biggest decision of your, of your life and, um, and help you along the way to make that uh, purchase. And remember, if you have questions for either of us, you can reach us. My number is 562-316-2915, or you can reach me at email at melinda.elmer at gmail.com, and you can reach Nick. Phone number is 714-642-3557, uh, 714-642-3557, or you can email me at ncowan at wccloans.com. That's N Cowan, N C O W A N, at W C C L O A N S dot com. Perfect. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.